It sounds simple at first. Connect two places separated by the sea. But building a tunnel under an ocean is one of the hardest engineering challenges ever attempted. Unlike bridges, which stay above the water, underwater tunnels must survive the weight of millions of tons of seawater pressing down from above, shifting geological layers below, and enormous pressure trying to force water into every crack. Engineers who attempt this kind of construction know that even a single weakness can flood the entire tunnel in seconds. That is why the design, geology, and safety systems behind the world's deepest underwater tunnels represent some of the most carefully planned projects in human history. Before construction begins, engineers need a compelling reason to build underwater. In almost every case, they choose a tunnel only when the ocean is too deep for bridge pillars, the weather is too harsh for long-span bridges, or the shipping traffic is too heavy to allow high marine structures. The seabed may also be unstable, making traditional methods impossible. So the decision begins with constraints of geography, environment, and transport needs. A tunnel provides a direct, weatherproof connection that can last over a century. But it also requires extreme precision, because the structure will sit deep beneath the seabed, where water pressure increases by one atmosphere for every 10 meters of depth. At depths reached by modern underwater tunnels, pressures can exceed 10 or 12 atmospheres, enough to crush unprotected machinery instantly. The first stage always involves understanding the seabed. Engineers spend years conducting geological surveys, using sonar mapping, seismic reflection studies, drilling samples, and robot-mounted cameras. These surveys identify the layers beneath the ocean floor, soft sediments, silt, clay, loose gravel, fractured rock, or solid bedrock. The ideal layer for tunnel construction is stable rock located deep enough to avoid surface water pressure, but not so deep that excavation becomes impossible. Engineers design the tunnel route to avoid faults, weak layers, methane pockets, and unpredictable formations. Every meter of the route is documented to determine where the tunnel boring machine will encounter hard granite, soft mudstone, or high-pressure water-bearing layers. Once the geology is understood, the next major problem is water pressure. Even if the tunnel is carved deep inside stable rock, water still finds pathways through microscopic cracks. Over time, these cracks enlarge. So engineers calculate water ingress rates, pour pressure inside rock layers, and the pressure exerted on the tunnel lining. The deeper the tunnel, the stronger the lining must be. Concrete alone cannot handle the load. That is why modern underwater tunnels rely on multi-layer protection. A structural lining made of reinforced concrete segments, a waterproof membrane system, steel reinforcement rings, and water drainage channels behind the main lining. The combination ensures that even if water penetrates the outer layer, it can be captured and diverted without entering the traffic zone. To excavate the tunnel, engineers design a custom tunnel boring machine, or TBM. A TBM made for underwater construction is very different from one used on land. It must be sealed against extreme pressure and equipped with a chamber that maintains high internal air pressure. This prevents water from rushing in during excavation. Inside the TBM, workers operate in a pressurized environment similar to conditions experienced by divers. Airlocks separate each section of the machine. Before entering or exiting, workers must adjust to pressure gradually, or they risk decompression sickness. The front of the TBM has a rotating cutter head designed for the type of rock expected. Behind it, conveyor belts remove crushed material. Then automated arms place precast concrete segments in a perfect circular shape. Each ring is bolted and sealed immediately, ensuring the tunnel is structurally stable only meters behind the advancing cutter head. The TBM must navigate accurately beneath the seabed. GPS signals do not penetrate deep underground, so engineers use inertial navigation systems, laser guidance, and powerful sensors to keep the machine on the planned path. Deviations of even a few centimeters can make connecting two tunnel segments nearly impossible. Pressure sensors continuously monitor the face of the machine, because if the TBM breaks into an unexpected water-bearing layer, the inflow can be catastrophic. To avoid this, the support pressure inside the cutter head chamber must always match the natural pressure of the surrounding earth and water. This is adjusted constantly by operators. Preventing flooding is one of the most important engineering tasks. The multi-layer lining system includes a rubber gasket at each segment joint, designed to remain waterproof for over 100 years. Behind the concrete lining, engineers install a drainage membrane that collects seepage and channels it into pumps located in maintenance tunnels. These pumps run continuously, removing small amounts of water before they build into something dangerous. Emergency bulkheads are installed at intervals along the tunnel. These are massive steel doors that conceal sections in case of a major leak. They are rarely used but are essential for safety. Sensors measure humidity, pressure, and water levels in real time. If even a small change is detected, alarms notify the control center instantly. 
Construction begins with vertical access shafts built on each coast. These shafts provide entry for workers and allow space for the TBM to be assembled underground. Lowering TBM components into the shaft is a delicate process. Some TBMs weigh more than 1,500 tons and require custom cranes. Once assembled, the TBM begins cutting through rock, progressing slowly, sometimes only a few dozen meters per week depending on geology. As the machine advances, each ring of the tunnel is installed behind it. The pace is slow but continuous. Engineers monitor the ground surface to ensure the excavation does not cause sinking or rising of land. Underwater, the pressure of the seabed and water ensures minimal disturbance above. But some projects require protective measures like ground freezing, grouting, or stabilizing soil with injected materials. If the TBM encounters fault zones, the machine may need to slow down or change support pressure to avoid collapse. One of the most difficult moments in underwater tunnel construction is the connection of two tunnel segments. If two TBMs are digging from opposite directions, they must meet precisely. Engineers calculate the trajectory with millimeter accuracy. As the distance between the machines reduces, lasers and sensors confirm alignment. In many large tunnel projects, especially those built under the sea, engineers often use two TBMs starting from opposite ends. When the tunnels meet, only the machine closest to its launch shaft is usually retrieved and disassembled. The TBM on the far end is often too deep, too large, and too expensive to pull back through the finished tunnel. So engineers leave it underground in a specially prepared chamber. This is common in deep rail tunnels and water tunnels worldwide, because removing a TBM can cost more than the machine itself and risks damaging the completed tunnel lining. Instead, the machine is driven into a side cavity, disconnected from power, and permanently sealed behind thick concrete. Many underwater and metro tunnels in Europe and Asia have multiple full-size TBMs buried beneath them, entombed safely where they will remain for the life of the tunnel. When the cutter head finally breaks through, it is usually into a controlled chamber filled with pressurized air or slurry, ensuring no water rushes in. The final lining is installed, sealing the connection permanently. After excavation, the tunnel undergoes extensive testing. Engineers fill sections with water to test for leaks. They measure the structural strength under maximum pressure load simulations. Ventilation systems are tested to ensure fresh air circulation in case of fire or congestion. Emergency exits, cameras, pumps, and lighting systems are installed. Fireproof coating is applied to key areas. Electric systems and communication cables are laid along maintenance paths. The tunnel's internal drainage system is tested by injecting controlled amounts of water to ensure it flows correctly into pumps. Even after completion, underwater tunnels require constant maintenance. Pumps operate 24 hours a day. Engineers inspect the lining with automated robots. Sensors transmit data on temperature, moisture, and vibration. Any sign of water entry is examined immediately. In many tunnels, maintenance crews perform scheduled shutdowns to clean drainage pipes, replace worn seals, and upgrade safety systems. Some tunnels include service tubes running parallel to the main passage, allowing workers to access equipment without closing traffic lanes. Keeping the tunnel from flooding relies on a combination of engineering layers. First, the geological layer. Choosing stable rock reduces the chance of collapse or water-bearing fractures. Second, the structural layer. Reinforced concrete segments provide physical strength. Third, the waterproof layer. Gaskets, membranes, and sealants prevent water infiltration. Fourth, the drainage layer. Pumps actively remove any seepage. Fifth, the emergency layer. Bulkheads isolate sections during extreme conditions. Sixth, the monitoring layer. Sensors detect issues before they become dangerous. These systems work together to keep the tunnel safe under the enormous pressure of the ocean. Without them, any minor problem could escalate rapidly. Water pressure increases by around 100 kilopascals for every 10 meters of depth. At depths used by modern underwater tunnels, pressures can exceed 1,000 kilopascals, strong enough to push water through microcracks, deform metal, and destabilize concrete. This is why engineers design with redundancy. Multiple layers exist so that if one protection fails, others take over. The construction of deep ocean tunnels also requires international standards. Ventilation must meet strict guidelines to remove vehicle exhaust. Fire systems must include foam suppression, emergency walkways, and escape passages. Power supplies must be redundant, with backup generators designed to operate even if the main grid fails. Communication systems must function during emergencies, and control rooms must have real-time access to every sensor and camera inside the tunnel. In many projects, the pressure difference between inside and outside remains the greatest challenge. The tunnel may operate at normal atmospheric pressure inside, 
but the surrounding rock carries the weight of the ocean above. This is why the concrete lining is often several feet thick. High-strength steel is used in joints. The waterproof gaskets are designed to remain flexible for decades, resisting chemical corrosion from seawater minerals. Modern underwater tunnels incorporate new materials such as fiber-reinforced polymers, corrosion-resistant alloys, and improved gasket compounds. TBMs themselves have advanced dramatically, with more powerful cutter heads, automated guidance, and sensors that monitor rock conditions in real time. All of this allows deeper and longer tunnels than ever before. The deepest tunnels of today prove that humans can build stable structures far beneath the surface, but they also show the limits of engineering. As depth increases, water pressure becomes extreme, and the cost rises sharply. Specialized machinery, geological preparation, and safety systems grow more complicated. This is why underwater tunnels represent some of the most expensive infrastructure projects in the world. Still, they continue to be built because they provide permanent, weatherproof connections that last generations. They allow transportation networks to link regions separated by the sea, reduce travel time, and support economic growth. The fact that these tunnels operate safely despite being buried under layers of rock, sediment, and ocean water is a testament to modern engineering. Today, underwater tunnels stand as some of the most challenging construction projects ever completed. Their success depends on years of planning, precision excavation, geological science, structural engineering, waterproofing technology, and continuous maintenance. The deep ocean remains one of the most hostile environments on Earth for construction, yet engineers have learned to tame it using design, pressure management, and advanced machinery. The deepest tunnels ever built continue to function because every meter of their structure was designed with one clear purpose, prevent the ocean from entering no matter what. That is how engineers built tunnels beneath the deepest parts of the sea and kept them from flooding, turning some of the world's most extreme environments into reliable transportation routes used every day. Don't forget to subscribe.